All right, hello everyone. Uh, we are live here. Um, I'm Denver Casado, founder of Beat by Beat, and I am joined with Jessica Penzias, who wrote the book for The Show Must Go Online, and Dave Hudson, who wrote the lyrics for The Show Must Go Online. How you guys doing? Good. Yeah, we're doing good, yeah. It's, uh, it's fun to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to do this now uh, publicly. We've had so many of these video chats. Uh, very intense uh, ones daily uh, over the past you know, few weeks. And so it's nice to be able to chat and be able to share our process uh, with, uh, with everyone else. Um, so the goal of this chat is to, is to share uh, how we came about uh, the, uh, the show must go online, the world's first virtual children's musical, um, how we created it, uh, what um, we're gonna share about uh, the process that we use to create the show, we're going to share about um, some of the challenge we faced in creating the show and um, some funny anecdotes that we learned about writing under pressure. Um, and uh, Phil, we also want to hear your questions. So you can start uh, by uh, giving questions now in the comments. Um, feel free to also let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, let us know uh, the location you're tuning in from. We'd love to see that. Um, so um, you can leave questions now, and then we can, uh, at the end of our little chat, we'll address as many as we can. So um, let's start with you, Jess. It's been um, a couple weeks since the show has gone out. How do you how do you feel? Two weeks uh, now that two weeks have passed. Looking back on the process of creating the show, um, now I feel extremely proud and energized. And some people have been posting content um, from their productions, which is and their rehearsals, which has been so exciting to see. And what I've seen looks absolutely incredible. Um, Immediately after we published the show, I was I I was so exhausted. I couldn't believe it. I feel like I was running on pure adrenaline the entire time we were writing and also all the craziness that had been going on. And then the second we were finished and it was published, I just felt like the floor fall out from under me. And I was like, I need to nap for a few days. Um, so now, now I'm good, I'll say. It does feel like a world ago when we were stuck in that mode of just getting this thing out. And those last 48 hours before the release were some of the most intense 48 hours of just kind of being glued. And like at one point I remember looking down and my hands were like bright red. I'm like, this is probably not a normal thing right now. <laughs> just trying to get the orchestrations and the music and everything all together. It was, uh, it was pretty intense, but, um, but also so satisfying and fun. And it's just amazing to see now all of the productions, virtual productions that are underway. Um, Dave, how are you feeling two weeks now uh, since the show has been released? Well, a uh, similar feeling is you had like, I mean, just uh, here's, here's an example I can give you how hard we worked near the end. I remember it was like Thursday, we, we, we released it on a Monday and it was like a Thursday or Friday. And I was like thinking about the show all the time. And I got up like a, like literally like four in the morning, four 30 in the morning. And I woke up and you had just sent an email. I thought, what's he still doing up? Or not what I was like, what is he doing up? I was like, oh, he hasn't gone to sleep yet, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, but I think that what's really been encouraging is echoing Jess is that, you know, a ton of schools have, have done this. And that, that was really our goal the whole time was to give a theatrical outlet to all these performers and schools and theater programs. And so to know that a ton of people are doing it to get those really cool videos that are coming in, just, you know, either, uh, you know, we had that one post where the girl was singing one of our songs, just phenomenal. She was playing the piano or the, the drama teacher who was talking to Mr. Whiskers and Mr. Whiskers didn't want to be in the picture and was biting him, you know, his own cat. He was filming at home. Uh, that kind of stuff is just wonderful. Absolutely. Um, it, there is a, it, it's so, um, it is so satisfying to see how, how people are responding and, and just the joy that it's bringing kids and drama teachers. Um, our goal with this was to write it as quickly as we possibly could. Um, not to necessarily write the most polished show we possibly could, but basically just to get something out there. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that process and how that helped us and what we learned about just being able to move forward creatively and how that can help you create something um, different than what you would if you had six months to a year to write a show. Um, and uh, it was really, really fascinating. And I think I, know, I learned a lot about um, how my creative process, and I'm sure you guys probably learned a lot as well. And for any of you that are watching, working on something, you know, maybe there's a few tidbits that you'll pick up as well. Um, so um, I thought first we'd step back and basically just let you know the genesis of this show, how it started. Um, so on March 12th, um, Dave sent me an email. And Dave, tell us a little bit about the program that you work with uh, with your wife out in Oak Park, uh, Illinois. 
Yeah, so uh, my wife has a has a, a whole theater company called the the Actors Garden, and they do um, programming throughout the year, and then they have a big summer camp, and and I, I write their shows, um, and uh, they, they're all musicals. And when this started coming, this was a while ago, it really was starting to feel like okay, this summer we might not be in a theater, so so what are we gonna do, you know? And we should probably start thinking about it. And we realized we weren't the only ones in that boat. Um, and so we, uh, you know, I reached out to you and said, hey, um, we need to figure out how to do a show within the restraints of, of what does it mean to have someone recording and, re you know, videotaping themselves individually, um, which is a different mix. Yeah. And you, um, you sent that email, said, Denver, we got we to figure something out to, to, to help people do something. And around that time at Beat by Beat, we were receiving a lot of feedback that people were, were, you know, struggling to figure out how to deal, how to do theater with kids remotely. Um, and this was at the very beginning of it. And so we um, jumped on a call then on March 17th, Dave and I had a Skype call and we just started just brainstorming, okay, what could exist that could basically be uh, as technologically simple as possible for drama teachers and to do with their kids in a remote setting. And uh, we came up with an idea uh, of basically um, creating a scene by scene show that kids could film remotely, upload, and when you string them all together, uh, it would tell a cohesive linear story. Um, for me, that was like a really attractive idea because it was like the most simple technologically way to, to do it. Like our goal was to basically have this be not require a video editor, not require like a Zoom master to be able to like do basically just to make it simple so that people could quickly start practicing, having fun, putting the rehearsals up. And so, um, and so that was kind of like our, on our first call, we, we sort of came up with this format, right, Dave? Yep. Yeah. And that, I think that's always an important thing to address is that, that um, uh, we know that a lot of people out there, it's literally, you know, the fifth grade teacher who has taken on the, 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 the school play and likes doing it. Um, but they, they don't have all of that. And, and you know, I, I like to cite, um, if you've seen the John Krasinski uh, thing where he brought on the whole cast of Hamilton, all that looked kind of live, but there was probably like eight hours plus of editing behind it to make it look that good with professional video people. So we, we knew that a lot of the teachers wouldn't have that. Yeah, those virtual choir videos are beautiful to look at, but they are not fun to make. I mean, that requires uh, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of editing and a lot of skill. And so we wanted to make it the barrier to be very, very simple. Um, and so um, that was on March 17th. And then I wrote out a few notes from that. And uh, I have like the original email here that I sent over to Jess. Um, and uh, it was like, you know, this was our goal is basically we want to create something that can be rehearsed and performed remotely by young actors. We want the drama teacher to add value in facilitating the musical. So we didn't want it to be something that kids just did on their own, but that somehow could feel like a rehearsal with the drama teacher being able to um, work with their students on making it better, improve, rehearse towards a final product. Um, so we came up with an idea of you know, 21 to one and, a minute, one and a half minute scenes, it tells a linear story when they're glued together, the videos should reference each other, um, the video should take place in different locations in the kids' houses, um, and it should require super simple editing. Um, and then uh, the only other thing we had come up with was it, these should maybe start with a big announcement of some big problem that needs to be solved. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I, um, I reached out to Jess because Jess is brilliant. And uh, I was like, I wanted her to be involved in this project. And so we got her on the call the next day. And um, what was your impression when I first sent that email to you, Jess? Like, what were you thinking? What, what was going on? What was I was so excited to see the email because I knew that this was you know a problem like I knew all these school productions were getting canceled like it was a big concern and um like leave it to you to to come up with something like so you know creative to really like run right at it um and create something for a different medium for for these communities so I was really excited and then like just totally daunted. Like how, how does this even work at all? Um, no idea, but I think I wrote back like, absolutely. Let's like figure it out, you know? So um, we hopped on a call and immediately like the 
the challenge that presented itself was like, how do you create like a linear story with a clear like arc that feels very ensemble driven and community driven, but is told in these like one minute installments that feels like very individual, but, but we want it to feel like it, it's this full cast coming together and, and creating a story. And like, what is the problem that this, these characters are facing that they need to solve and what are the obstacles that get put in their way and like do they or don't they solve that problem and that's kind of what you need to figure out when you're writing any musical like that is the general you know story arc so I remember we immediately started kind of like brainstorming like what what problems are they facing what do they want to make and we were throwing out all these different ideas um, and then ultimately I think it was like Denver just kind of offhand said like yeah like what if their school musical was canceled or something and we were like that's the idea like that that that's so simple that is what's going on here and like how fun would it be to do this kind of meta show about kids trying to mount a musical at home which is exactly what they're doing um so we built out this concept of like there will be a show within the show we didn't know what that show would be um they would have to convince the each other convince the drama teacher send video messages back and forth they would have to rehearse at home that comes with all sorts of tech problems and personal problems, which is just like the lives that we're living right now as we like live on Zoom and Skype and all these platforms. And then they would have to perform the show at home. So we kind of built out this structure. And I think we got off that call and I like dropped, like jumped in a Google doc and just captured everything we had discussed and outlined the whole thing in one day, which is absolutely never something that is done. Yeah, I will never forget that first meeting. I mean, I think I sent Jess an email at like 3 p.m. Like, hey, want to jump on the Skype call with me and Dave? We're trying to figure out this thing. 5 p.m., like two hours later, she like jumps on the call. All three of us are chatting. Uh, we mentioned this idea of trying to save the musical. It instantly feels right for us. And then Jess, like right then, like opens up a Google Doc are like, all right, here, here we go. Act one, it could be boom. Like they're trying to basically like save the musical. Act two, it's them rehearsing the musical. Act three, it's them doing the musical. And as you start like outlining, I'm like, what is going on here? It's like within like that call, like she basically just uh, outlined kind of the movie and, and we were on the Google doc as well, just chiming in. And by that evening, we basically had an outline of the show, like all three acts. And we were like, okay, like, I yeah. Think fun. On that call, we were all like brainstorming ideas, like what is going to go awry in these rehearsals and like coming up with, oh, the camera's in the wrong place. And oh, like there's noise off stage and oh, like they can't get the, the Skype call to start. No, they can't do like all these things that we were facing in our daily lives, we were coming up with. And I think on that first call, even Dave was like, oh yeah, the show must go on line. Like we, yeah. we were like, we were just, it was just like all these ideas were getting thrown into this Google doc immediately. Yeah. Um, and it was, but I, I think because that first meeting was so productive, it set us off with such a, um, a bang and like we had clarity somehow from the beginning of like what this could be um and then the hard part started of actually creating it but um but it just felt right that we were writing about what we were experiencing and it just it felt like um it, it just felt it felt right <laughs> um and it felt really really fun too and silly um so we um from there basically would meet once every other day at least in the beginning um, yep. At the end, it was once every day. We basically kind of have our, our regular times to Skype in. I uh, just had a Google Doc going um, with the libretto. Uh, me and Dave would jump in at all hours of the night, kind of giving comments and then resolving comments and kind of like giving thoughts. Like, but then we would have our once a day meeting to to discuss. Um, and when you're creating any musical, um, a lot of the work in the very beginning falls, of course, on the book writer. Um, because usually story comes first and then, and then the songs kind of exist and eat up some of the story. Um, so just, I guess, tell a little bit about your process of how you first started kind of drafting the scenes, what you chose to tackle first and uh, yeah. Yeah, so for me, when it comes to musical theater writing, I usually do start with an outline so that you have kind of a clear picture of, of where things are gonna go and kind of build the arc out that way. This show was unique in that there was a show within the show. Um, so the songs kind of had to function in two ways. That was that was one of the challenges we were confronting at the beginning. Like how many songs does this show have in it? How quickly can we write those songs? Um, 
And so we kind of settled on a certain number of songs. We were going to see those songs function like in rehearsal, and then we were going to see them in the performance at the end of the show as well. So I was trying to like build the outline with that in mind and, and how do these songs function in two different ways. And we decided that the songs should function like first and foremost in the rehearsal process, like find the humor in those moments. So like, for instance, there's the song about being very quiet. Um, and the joke of the song is that there's all this like off screen noise going on, which we've all experienced on like our work calls where like the dog is barking or like your kids are banging on the door or like all these interruptions. We really wanted to bake that into the show. So we were coming up with these moments in the rehearsals. And then when, as we were building our way towards the end of the show, we were like, oh, we actually have to figure out like how these songs would function in the show within a show, in the musical that these kids were going to mount before their show got canceled. Um, so then it was about building like a second arc within the arc of the show um, that these songs could function in. Uh, so that was another unique challenge. Um, yeah. And then, when, when, yeah. No, I mean, 100%. That was, I mean, the, the ideas for the songs first came about the comedy and the humor that you could get out of it. So we know like we want to have a song basically where there's interruptions and it's going to be about how quiet it is. We want a song where a kid like is trying to sing something but keeps forgetting, you know, keep, has to keep calling line, even though he like has a script like right there. Like we thought that would be funny. Like, so we had these all uh, ideas for song moments, no idea how they would exist within the show, within the show. Um, so the show within the show kind of came at the end and somehow we basically were able to piece these moments together yeah the the benefit was so we kind of viewed that like show within a show as a jukebox musical of the songs that came earlier in our virtual musical and we were like how do we take these pre-existing songs and like build a narrative around them but but then we realized we had to figure out like what exactly that show within a show had to be um and we were grappling with like which what what would that be exactly so we were come and the benefit that we had was that like the show within a show didn't necessarily have to be a good musical. In fact, like it's funnier if it's like kind of like a ridiculous musical within our musical. So then we started brainstorming like what are some ridiculous musicals that these kids could have been working on before their show got canceled. This certainly was one of the biggest challenges of the early process of this show, basically figuring out what that show within the show would be. Right, Dave? Oh yeah, yeah. It was really. Um... <laughs> and we just and we like we I remember like Denver has this thing where he freezes and you're not sure if it's the the camera or like he suddenly has hit a wall and like we are talking through what's the show other the show and we're like well it could be this and you just see Denver go and you're like okay and we all felt the same way we're like I don't know I, it's something that we could um, do we don't know this is a good point of like the zoom creative collaborations right which i guess you kind of get when you're in the room working with somebody too but you can't see everybody all the time so if you're going off and discussing an idea and one of your collaborators is like you know like not like not driving with it you can instantly kind of see and that uh but we um the show within the show we had was one of our biggest hangups in the beginning we spent probably three four days um which in the grand scheme of creating a musical isn't a lot of time but when you're trying to create a show in 20 days um, is, is, is a lot of time um, of what it could be. And so I thought I'd um, uh, share with you guys some of our early uh, ideas of what the show within the show could be. I think, um, well, <laughs> so one of them was um, that it made it into the show as a reference was In the Tights, a Shakespearean hip hop musical, uh, which we all loved. I mean, that's such a fun idea, but the issue we're running into is we spent like two or three Skype meetings trying to figure out what that show within the show would be. Like, okay, so it's in the tights, it's Shakespeare. Does that mean that it's present day, but they're all, uh, and it takes place like in Washington Heights, but they're all speaking like Elizabethan like language? Or does it take place in like Shakespearean language, but it's about like a, instead of like a deli vendor, it's like a, a meat grinder trying to sell. Like, we're trying to like figure out what is this world of the show within the show, basically trying to create a whole musical from scratch within our musical. And we were basically just getting confused and uh, it was it was hard to figure that out even though we like the title it just seemed overly complex <laughs> um, other ideas uh, that we had for a while I don't know if you guys remember this one but for a couple of days we had the idea of the big mermaid which was uh, you know the adventures of Ariel's uh, but 
after writing that by a few people, we understood why that probably isn't a great uh, um, way to go. <laughs> we had Singing Down the Drain, um, A Journey in the Life of a Hairball. Uh, we had Greasy, the musical stylings of car mechanics, which eventually made a joke into the show. Um, Mary Poppin' Lockins, uh, hip hop dance musical. Um, but by the end, we we're basically debating between Brushes with Greatness, the dental hygiene musical, which is one of Dave's very first ideas. He came up with it like in a second because he's a pun master. And, uh, and then In the Tights. And we spent so much time debating, like not so much time, but it was hard to figure out in the tights, fresh of the greatness, in the tights, fresh of the greatness. And basically uh, one of our calls, um, I just decided, guys, we're going with fresh of the greatness. It's gonna be the dental hygiene musical. It's gonna be ridiculous and silly. And it's just the clarity of, of what that show is was just instant. And so we felt like we could basically resolve a lot of the pressure of having to figure that out because we knew what a ridiculous show that would be. And we could just get on with writing the actual show. Um, and in the tights, I feel like we would have just been still mixed up with a lot of the complexities of how to tell that story. But basically, um, we just made a decision. We're going with Brushes with Greatness. And I'm just so happy that we did, because I think writing about Defined Cavities and Harold Rince and Bob Flossie and Tommy Tooth saved, saved us and saved me in the late, late, late hours of the night, because I felt like I was in a dream like escape, like, I don't know, recording songs, brushing my teeth at like 4 a.m., <laughs> like playing the piano. It was just like so silly and ridiculous, but it made me smile and laugh so much every time I would just like, I don't know, we'd be, we'd be sharing ideas. Um, yeah, what, what were your guys' feelings about that show within the show, like the ultimate decision of, of going with Brushes with Greatness? I feel like I was leaning towards Brushes with Greatness just because the plot seemed very clear to me and that it was easily adaptable. Like I was like, well, obviously Plaque is the villain here. And then like we have a toothbrush and, the, and, the, and then like the puns were just writing themselves and by writing themselves, I mean, Dave was writing them. <laughs> so I didn't have to figure it out. Um, it was, it was just like so fun and so clear. And I was immediately like, here's how the quiet song would work. Here's how the like face song would like, you, you know, you're not looking at his face song would work. Here's how the song where you're calling line would work. Like it felt like so much clearer to me um, and just like so ludicrous and silly that it was just really fun and preposterous. Yep. Same here. It was, it was, it was, you know, and, and, and we can call it a silly show, but it was also a simple show. The, the, the concept of the show was simple so that we weren't, we, we knew exactly how we were framing our show around it. And we also wanted it to be um, general enough that everybody could understand it, like even internationally. We knew there would be some international schools and theaters that would want to do this as well. So we couldn't have it be so specifically like culture focused or, uh, and so, you know, everybody has a mouth. And so we decided like, we can all relate to dental hygiene and it would just be silly and funny. And uh, yeah, it was, um, I feel like after, after making that decision and we started going forward with it, like things just started moving even faster because we had a show within the show. We just knew what we needed to write. And then everybody just turned up their game and just started writing fast. Um, the fact that um, we've all written a lot of musicals before and have gone through the BMI workshop and stuff, I feel like it's so helpful because um, I'm just so impressed and blown away by Jess, you and Dave on, in terms of just how, how great you are at your craft and how quickly you were able to work and just, you know, we just, there would be a draft of a scene and then Dave would ha know how to like create this beautiful tight lyric. And then I would like write a voice memo on the piano and, and send it back. And then we would adjust the lyric and then Jess would adjust the scene. And it was like, it became like clockwork where we were just like, we knew what we had to do. We knew the show within the show was Brush of the Greatness. We had our 20 scene outline and we just went on like full speed ahead. And, um, and we didn't question ourselves too much. Like we just instantly like moved forward because we didn't have the luxury of like debating whether there's a better idea um, because we wanted to get this out or you know our, our initial goal was April 15th but um, we were able to get out two weeks almost before that um, and uh, I just I love I love that process in general personally like I feel like I thrive on that quick fast creative process because if any of you out there are, are creative people you know how easy it is to get bogged down on the um, the the, the decisions you have to make over and over again, second guessing whether that's the best option or not the best option. But when you write quick and you have to get something up there, you don't, you don't have that luxury and you just, you just get it done. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, so, uh, so from there, we basically started um, writing the show. The interesting thing too, is that at one point, um, 
the title song of this show, the show must go online was never part of the show. Um, it was basically because we were just, we decided early on, we wanted all the songs to be, what's the fancy name for it? Where it's all within the show. Diegetic. Oh. <laughs> um, which means they all come from a, a place within the story. Um, and they're not, you know, it's not just, I'm feeling this, I'm going to sing about this now. Um, and so, uh, but at one point Dave had written on the first page of the Google doc libretto, like, Hey guys, I kind of came up with a lyric, like, I don't know where it could exist in the show, but here it is. And it was, um, a lot of what you see now in the show must go online. And, um, and it just felt really nice to have some sort of real anthem and song that celebrates what this is all about. Um, and I took that lyric and I remember being late after the kids went to bed, like at the piano, just kind of like playing through it, playing through it. We had like a few different courses, a few different things. And um, actually I wanted to share with you guys like one very early draft of uh, a voice memo that I did of that song where the chorus was completely different. Um, let's see here. Um, so that was like an early voice memo that I had sent over of, of when the chorus was slightly different, when all the world is home confined, the show must go on, the show must go online. But then we had two or three different versions that I sent to you and we ultimately decided on the one that we, that we have. What, yeah. what, were, what were your thoughts in writing that lyric, uh, Dave, as you were creating that? Yeah, it, it felt like it needed, you know, I mean, I, we didn't quite touch on this yet, but one of the challenges of the show is, is, you know, that we were keeping the scene to a minute, minute ish. And then it needed this sort of really framing song that needed to talk about where we were at and why the show is there and, and, and all that. And I, I think it's fun uh, that you played that because that like lets us see behind the curtain of how we work is that a lot of times it'll be, I'll have a lyric and then you'll be like, okay, this part of the lyric works. And then I get the da, 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 da. And then, so then I find the words in there. And like a lot of the words I find actually come from what Jess calls it. She calls it word vomit. Um, she just like writes a whole bunch of ideas in a scene with all sorts of images and stuff that isn't really ne necessarily intended to be part of the scene. And then she pulls that into the song. And then we pull that into the song. And that song originally was just going to be, um, we didn't have a place for it. So we thought this is, this will just be the curtain call. Like we'll just leave, put, have this at the end. Kids can record their own cover. It'll kind of just be the, the feeling of the show. Um, and then it wasn't until later when we realized like, wait, we could actually like, what if there was a kid who could play piano? And like, this was a way to convince the drama teacher to help them do the show at the end of act one. And it just seemed to really, really work there. And it's been cool to see kids playing the piano, singing that song. Um, uh, it's pretty special. Um, uh, so, uh, what are some other things, I guess, that, uh, what were some of the other bigger challenges you feel like that we faced in creating, in creating the show, Dave or Jess? Well, Dave was touching on it before, just kind of keeping these, um, segments short, short enough, um, and, but giving everyone a chance to shine. Um, and having kind of varied parts for everyone, um, varied but equal, these different um, roles within the show and building out different personalities, developing them um, in such a short period of time, you really had to establish each character um, right off the bat because they're not gonna necessarily reappear later in the show. So it was an interesting t challenge to have these kind of um, self-contained moments. Yeah, 100%. They all need, each scene need to feel kind of like its own little story, little meal that they could give a kid a spotlight. And um, it wasn't until the end when we were started show, sharing the draft with a few other teachers that um, they helped inform us that, you know, that we might have some theater kids and drama kids that aren't comfortable doing a full song or a full scene in the show. So we, that's when we wrote um, at the, uh, the last, uh, the two little mini scenes that are in the show, you know, about the pets or to basically help if there's any kids are a little bit shy that maybe just want to do a 15, 20 second scene. Um, we added those sort of towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, uh, the show within the show that happens at the end, um, it was a, bit, a little bit challenging too to figure out 
the most concise way to basically tell a full musical in eight minutes or so, right? right? right. Yes. Yeah, like, um, and we wanted to, we, we were debating for a while too, like how to, how much to reveal of like the original rehearsal versions of the song versus the performance versions to make it still seem like it's fresh. And we wanted it to ideally feel like when we see the full performance at the end, we're seeing these songs in kind of like a new context um, with all the characters that have been set up before. Yeah. And I, so, so that was like an interesting thing. How do we give enough context at the beginning that these songs kind of make sense, um, but not um, tip our hand too much to, to give everything away so that it feels like we're just repeating things later in the show. Um, yeah, we wanted it to feel like fresh in, in both, both uh, incarnations. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like the staging of all of this was something we were playing with. Um, is everything doable at home with a computer or with a phone? Is like, how, how would everything play out? Can one kid play multiple roles in this scene? And what exactly would that look like? And that was like us at home in our, you know, offices and bedrooms and wherever reenacting, enacting the scenes ourselves to try and figure out like- It's how awesome, you know, try to you know, sing it while, as we're like holding the cameras and basically trying to act out the scenes as we would do it. And that was fun as well. You know, each of our meetings, we would do a read through of the script, trying to mimic the videos as much as we could to get a sense of how it would work. Um, and that, uh, that made, it, made it fun. And we learned a lot, obviously, from that. <laughs> um, so we created the show um, in, in about 19 days. Like, what was your guys' life like outside of creating the show during that time? Like, how did you balance like everything going on in the world, real life, with also hunkering down and creating the show so quickly. Uh, Dave, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, we, we talked a little bit about this this earlier, that one thing is that we would meet kind of at the end of the day, which was interesting because I, I don't know if people know this, but we're in three different time zones. Denver's on the West Coast, uh, just as on the East Coast, I'm in Chicago. And um, so we would meet at near the end of someone's day. And uh, we would just go through it and talk and it would be kind of a, a, exhausting, like screen tired is a, is a good thing. And for me, I had other stuff going on and then I would have to decide, okay, I'm gonna dive right in and work on this now and bash it out. Or is this like a five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning thing that I'm gonna get up when I'm fresh and, and knock it out, you know, in the, the time I had. But um, it was, um, I don't know, sometimes when you're in that busy mode, you just, you just go and you get things done. Um, it was, it was challenging, but, but it felt great. It was very invigorating. Jess? Yeah. And I would say like, as this, you know, pandemic was, you know, escalating and going full steam, it, it was like a really, really troubling time. But this writing process was truly such a joy. And it, we all felt such a strong sense of purpose because we, we knew, like, I remember my elementary and middle school musicals and they were such formative times in my life. And I remember rehearsing them for months. And the fact that like they were canceled is just heartbreaking. And, and so we all felt like so, so clear in the purpose of this um, project which isn't always the case when you're writing something. Sometimes you're just writing something and you're like, it'll get produced maybe five years from now, maybe never, or maybe a year from now, I, I don't know. But we, it was so clear, the focus was so clear that I felt like the outside world was kind of fading away when we were working on this project. Um, and then when it was over, I woke up and I was like, okay, so what is life in quarantine? Like, where are we, what's happening? Okay, but like during this process, like re really, this was was um, very consuming and 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 a nice escape as well. Definitely, yeah. Um, it definitely feels like a little bit of a blur to me when I think back about the process. Um, but it was um, like I don't remember uh, the the songs are so ridiculous. I don't remember rewriting half of them. Like when I listen back on them now and like think about them, they they just uh, it was. I feel like I was in a different, completely different zone when we were creating it. Um, and the, uh, the, the amazing thing was the feedback we received from you guys too. Um, you know, I was putting together these little videos to give updates on what we were working on. Like I started right after we had come up with the idea for the show. And I mean, the response that we got from that first video of like, we have no idea what we're doing, but this is our idea. We're going to try to write this really fast so that you guys have something to do. 
Um, it was, you know, beyond a response, like anything we've ever received. And it was just so encouraging. And so it was like, guys, we got to do this now. <laughs> like we can't turn back. Like we have to create something. Um, and, and it was so uh, amazingly, uh, I don't know, just helpful and inspiring just to see um, the support from the beat by beat community being like, you know, this is, I mean, this is such a great idea. Please, you know, please make this happen. Please make this happen. And so um, there was just no question in my mind that we had to get this out ASAP. And so when I saw that we were able to get it out, you know, even earlier than we'd expected. Um, I mean, that last week was just certainly a push. And like, by the end of it, I was like, we really could have used an extra week to like, um, <laughs> to, to, to put this, I mean, particularly the orchestrations and the recordings. And I have so many people to thank that helped out with this. I mean, Andrew Fox, who did the orchestrations is kind of like the fourth collaborator in this. And I might try to get him on in a separate call later on um, so he could talk about his process. But I mean, he orchestrated this entire show in a uh, week. Um, I, I mean, and he didn't, I didn't even ask him to. I mean, he had emailed and saw what we were working on and was like, and he's done our previous, some of our previous shows, but he was just like, you know, I want to be a part of this. So, um, so that was just amazing. And there were so many other people that reached out to us to help, to proofread, to edit, to give suggestions. And um, it, people saw the value that this, I think, was going to provide and just wanted to be a part. And that was really, really encouraging. Um, and I think that uh, the, now that I think back about it, like the sad part for me was like seeing all these virtual happy hours happening with all my friends and like everyone and not being able to do them. And everyone's talking about the latest Tiger King and all the Netflix shows that they binge and all the stuff that they're watching. I'm like, I want to be able to watch Netflix shows. Like, but we were just, uh, it was, uh, it, it was, uh, I remember like after we released the show, April 6th, the first thing that I did was um, I poured my glass of, uh, self a glass of wine and just sat back on the couch and just watched Tiger King. And I was like, oh, this is what, this is what I wanted to do the whole time we were writing this show. Uh, I think that was I think that was after you probably slept for 24 hours though because <laughs> I think you were up the entire weekend before before yeah. this came out. In particular was wearing so many different hats during this process cuz you were writing the show with us and then I can't imagine all the additional stress of figuring out the recordings and the vocal tracks and getting people to record the songs and getting the orchestration in order and then figuring out like all the additional materials and interacting with the whole beat by beat community so it's just like a total whirlwind yeah i mean it was it was um it was a whirlwind but it, i wouldn't trade it off like for the world it was it was awesome and um and i'm ready to write the next one i'm just kidding <laughs> and uh but um i also couldn't have done that of course like without without linda so linda from beat by beat is my wife as well and so she was managing the two kids also staying up late like at the very end putting together production materials and like, I felt bad at the end because I wasn't able to see the kids as much as I would have liked to. Um, but, um, you know, it's all, um, it's, it's, it, it's, it was just three weeks and now we're, we're back to normal routine mostly. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I think now I'll uh, turn to some questions that um, have come in. And if you guys have any questions about our writing process, about anything about the show, about, um, anything regarded, uh, related to this, feel free to put them in the comments and we'll try to uh, address them as much as we can. Um, so we already received a few. Um, how, many, uh, how, many, how many man hours, how many hours does it take to do the uploading and sequencing and editing of the videos from each actor? Um, so Dave, you did a trial run with this right before we released the show with some, um, with some of your actors you've worked with previously what was your experience basically and you did it within 24 hours um basically right, right. the dress rehearsal of this entire show um what, what were some what was your experience doing that yeah i think that's a that's a tough uh thing to 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 answer exactly but here's what i would say is that we did it in 24 hours the the, the we worked with our counselors so slightly older kids these weren't you know eight to ten year olds or anything like that these these were mostly older teenagers. Um, so we worked on it. And then I think the biggest lesson we kind of learned was, I would say out of the 20 videos, we got about four or five that we thought, okay, that well, however many times that person worked on it, that felt about right. You know, they were doing, but if I would have been rehearsing and it taking more time, I would count on at least two or three kind of round trips with, with the performers of like, try it, coach them, then send it back. So I would, I would count on, you know, really you've got to have whatever rehearsal, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks, 
And then that final week, I would count on that that week would be what you're doing, like daily takes, looking at them and then putting together the best ones that you kind of have your watch party on Friday or Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the feedback we've been receiving, and it's, it's been awesome to see how inventive and creative all of you theater educators and directors have been in doing this show because we give you the material, but we didn't really, I mean, we give you some advice on how to rehearse it, but um, it seems like a, a popular way is to basically have Zoom cast meetings at least once, twice a week, but then to have breakout sessions where each actor can kind of work individually with the director or with your music director to like go over the music, go over your specific scene, and then you kind of, and then they film a video and then you can come back together on a big Zoom call and have a cast meeting to go, th to, to go through the videos and see what's working and what's not. So a combination of basically large cast Zoom rehearsals with uh, individual rehearsals to work one-on-one -on -one with the kids um, seems to be a really popular format that I think is going to work really well. And it seems like a lot of teachers or a lot of theaters and organizations are using um, about a month to put the show together, you know, three weeks of rehearsal and then the final one. And then it seems um, doing uh, a lot of them are doing Facebook live premieres and YouTube live premieres, which I think is just awesome and such a fun way to make it exciting, involve the community. Everybody can get to see it at the same time. Um, in terms of editing the videos, you know, like it, the, you can really just line them up in iMovie, 20 videos all together. And the only thing you might need to do is just drag and drop the beginnings and ends of the clips just to make sure they're tight. Um, but, and then you can just export that. Um, the YouTube playlist idea also, um, also does work for people that don't want to even deal with iMovie, which is where the students upload their videos unlisted to YouTube, and then you create an unlisted playlist with all of those videos in order. Um, obviously naming your videos is very important with the scene number at the beginning of each file, just to make sure there's super clarity in terms of being able to organize it. Um, one little tip I have noticed as we've seen some uh, productions come in is to give a little bit of space at the beginning of each scene so that there can kind of be in a reaction to the video that just happened. Um, I think it's, it's kind of naturally, you might want to just start acting like right away, but I feel like having a little bit of a breather, like a few seconds of just kind of reacting to like the, the uh, a re a three seconds of reaction to the video and then addressing, maybe not like that, but <laughs> having a little bit of space of reaction, I feel like helps kind of make the story seem a little bit more natural. So that's just a little tip that I've noticed from seeing some stuff come in. Um, all right. Uh, we, uh, this is from Andrew Tribe from Original Kids Theater Company. We're finding uh, a one of the most difficult parts of, is the play within the play. Any tips on keeping the story consistent and clear, the last act at the end? Uh, any tips, Jess, for that? Being the story consistent and clear. Oh, as the kids also are like have to play multiple roles and stuff in each of those scenes, um, I can imagine that's a little overwhelming like the, the kids are like talking to themselves and then addressing you know themselves back um i think the more you can lean into the humor of that and lean into the fact that like the joke of it is that they're doing this musical online and it's like a little bit less than ideal um it doesn't have to be like perfect and polished um and the the actor that's performing the scene is having this meta experience of playing an actor that's, you know, grappling with adjusting to performing at home. So I think that they can lean into that and, um, you know, uh, enjoy the central conflict of the plaque versus the toothbrush and floss. I think labels can be your friend too, you know? I don't think you can over label things. Even though there are different funny things going on, I feel like post-it notes onto like stuffed animals and characters, hello, my name is labels, like in on any sort of character when you're doing the scene within the scene at the end, um, or even a big, you know, backdrop with, you know, who, I mean, like, I don't feel like you can be overly obvious to help the, to the audience understand. So I, I think like labels and descriptions, like, you know, sillyly done on like, whether it's your stuffed animals or whether it's the hat person um, uh, or whether it's just whoever you are acting, um, I think could be your friend, definitely in performing the show at the end. And I'll say like, we're so excited to see what, how you guys interpret this and, and what everyone does. So please tag us in everything so that we can see it. And I think what's gonna be really exciting about this virtual musical is that there's gonna be so many different productions going up. We can all kind of be in conversation with each other and they'll be informing future productions. Um, 
So it's just going to be this really fun ecosystem that I'm excited to watch develop. Certainly. Yeah. We want to see, uh, we have a question here, you know, are, do you guys want to see our finished products? And we definitely do, you know, this is meant to be shared publicly. Um, so you can upload online, you can upload to YouTube, um, you can upload to Vimeo or just send us files. We would love to see anything that you guys are working on. Um, and it would, uh, and we would love other people to see that too, because I feel like by seeing other productions will help inform other people to have ideas for their productions. So uh, certainly email us or tag us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, any productions that you guys upload. Yeah, I think I think that's a, a critical thing. Uh, you know, just to, to mention one example is that Denver and I worked, worked on Tut Tut together, right? And Tut Tut premiered at our at the Actors Garden, but we worked on it and sort of workshopped it and tried it out. Um, with the timeline here, that hasn't happened. Um, and that's both exciting and um, kind of uh, welcoming uh, that, that, they, that you're really the premier. Everyone who's, who's picked this up already is a premier and, and we're gonna start seeing uh, what this show really is. And, and that's, that's fun to know that, that it's, it's live and, and evolving. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, you can feel free to, um, comment or email us. Uh, we, you know, we're email is usually best for us as we're all remote. So we can, you know, anytime you email hello at bbbpress.com with any questions you have about the show, we usually respond as quickly as we can within, um, 24 hours. Um, and, uh, so I see a couple other questions here. Um, How many characters? There are 20 characters in the show, uh, 20 actors. Um, deciding on how to label the actors was also a little bit of a question for us. Um, uh, great. So um, thank you guys so much for uh, being part of this. Um, uh, and uh, we, uh, we are so excited to see you know, everything that, that comes. I mean, right now, we're just trying to see some productions um, pop up. Um, and, and thank you guys so much for uh, you the educators for doing what you're doing in this new environment um these kids are very lucky to be able to have people that are willing to take on new technology new types of projects to be able to still um work together and, and put on shows so um uh if there's any other way that we can continue to support what you're doing please just let us know send us an email um and uh just dave i could not be thankful enough that you guys were willing to basically take on this project in such a short amount of time frame i'm so blown away by uh by your skill and your talent and and your how you're able to put this together um so thank you guys for being part of this with me and um uh you know hopefully there's more there's more in the future so um thank you guys for being part of this uh live broadcast and we're excited to see your shows go online great Bye. thanks Bye.